Okay, everyone. Good morning and welcome to another session. So today we'll be more focused on PowerShell. So previously I've taken these sessions on virtualization, then Windows, Linux, and today we are going to see PowerShell scripting. So I'll give you an introduction of PowerShell scripting and what all things can be done. So if possible, at the end, also show you how we can add additional templates and also utilize ready-made scripts that are already available. So when you come to scripting, it's mostly about reuse reusability. So you would generally try to reuse what is already available rather than going and creating that. And again, this being an, or uh, you can say, open source so it's not the script is not compiled and it's not that you cannot see what is there in the script so the the complete code is visible to you and people do share their scripts on the various uh, platforms available so you do have a good repository of scripts that are available for your activities that you want to automate or you want to use powershell for so getting starting with PowerShell. So first of all, what is PowerShell? Windows PowerShell is a task automation and configuration management framework from Microsoft. It consists of a command line shell and associated scripting language built on the .NET framework. So this is a formal definition of PowerShell. Now, why is PowerShell awesome? Because first of all, you do not, it's easy to use. Secondly, you do not need to compile any scripts. That means when you run the script, depending upon the activity, depending upon the commands, it would get executed quickly. So there is no compile time that is required for your PowerShell script. You directly run it from your Windows PowerShell. So PowerShell also puts .NET, the entire framework at your fingertips. It's easy to get started. We just need to learn the PowerShell syntax. It integrates easily with various Microsoft services and programs that are available. There are also several best practices that we need to look at whenever we are using PowerShell. So I, this always brings to my mind a famous quote from the movie Spider-Man that says, with great power comes greater responsibility. So PowerShell does give you great power, but you need to use it responsibly. Likewise, whenever you're using any online scripts, be sure that you read through it, what the script does and then only execute those scripts. PowerShell is quite a strong scripting language and it integrates into your shell and has the capability of running privileged commands. We need to be very careful whenever you're using PowerShell, especially with scripts that are downloaded from online sources. So we start with chapter one. So where is PowerShell available? Yes, it's available on all Windows platforms, starting from Windows 7. It was downloadable, downloadable even on Windows Vista, and I'm not sure of XP, but yes, Windows Server 2003 also, it was downloadable and installable, but a very old version, a very limited shell. Windows 7 had more better integration, even Windows Server 2008 R2. It comes default in Windows 8 and Win Windows Server 2016 onwards. Also available in 2019 and 2022 versions. Now, Windows Server, like we discussed, it comes with two flavors. One is with your full desktop. And second one comes with just your console edition. When you select the console edition, it's a PowerShell console that you get for managing your server. So all the scripts, all the commands that you would run 
would be on your console itself. And now PowerShell is also available on Linux. So Microsoft is now use, looking forward to cross-platform availability of its products as well. I'm not sure whether you are aware of so many Microsoft products are also now available on Linux. I would not say many, I would say actually rather a few products. One of the major enterprise products that was moved to a Linux platform was your MS SQL Server, which was primarily that used to run on Windows servers only. It's now also available to run on Linux machines. You also have PowerShell commandlets and that can now install and run on Linux machine. They can also execute privileged commands on Linux machine. So when you go to a Linux environment, your primary scripting language is shell and bash. So along with that, now you can also utilize PowerShell on a Linux environment. So we can do this part a bit interactive as well. So everyone has their Windows machines. So it's very easy to launch your PowerShell. So all Windows 10 machines have PowerShell pre-installed. So you generally do not need to go and install PowerShell onto your Windows machine. And there is no limitation that prevents you from running PowerShell on your machine. So you can launch it and execute any type of scripts on your machine. Yes. Since we are using corporate machines, privileged instructions, privileged commands would not be executed on the machine. So if you run any privileged command, yes, the PowerShell window would throw an error and you would not be able to execute them on the machine. But generic commands that you want to test and you want to simulate, yes, they would, should definitely run until it is not going to modify any of these system, underlying system. It's simple to get started with PowerShell. You go on start and you can search for PowerShell. The state it brings you the various options for PowerShell. Now PowerShell, unlike its predecessor, which was only 32 bit, that was the CMD, the command shell, it is now available in both x86 and 64-bit version. The default that you will launch on your machines, on the newer machines, would be the 64-bit version. So this is my PowerShell window. You can see over here, it clearly says the first line, try the new cross-platform PowerShell. It's cross-platform because it's available now on all platforms. It's also available on the Macintosh. So yes, you can install PowerShell on Macintosh machines as well and execute your PowerShell scripts from there. In case you do not find PowerShell installed on your machine, so you have to go and activate the feature for windows powershell now you can see that i've just put windows 8 to 10 because i've not yet seen how it is on windows 11. So yes so that something still needs to be seen but yes it will be available on windows 11 as well in case powershell is not configured you just need to go and activate the feature windows powershell 2.0 so this is again an privilege instruction that is a privileged activity so you need administrator rights on your machine to execute this along with powershell you also get the integrated script editor so this is your ide for working with powershell This also allows you to execute the scripts directly from the ID. So you do not need to open a separate PowerShell commandlet. 
to perform to execute your scripts. Now, apart from using the integrated IC, that is the integrated PowerShell ID, you can also utilize any of the familiar IDs or you can say the free IDs that are available. PowerShell scripting can be done in Visual Studio that totally supports PowerShell. You can also use VS Code. You can also make use of Notepad++. You can also make use of just a plain Notepad file. So your file that you would save, your PowerShell file would be a PS1 file. That's the PowerShell file name. You can see here, as the name says, it's PS1. That would be your script file name. So for commandlets, we used to use a bat file, bat file, or we could use a cmd file. Now, when it comes to PowerShell, we would generally create PS1 scripts and store them onto your storage. Any ID works fine. So depending upon the id you use you do get the autocomplete features and all already integrated into the id but the default id also has the features already available so it has intellisense enabled so as soon as you start typing a command or its parameters it would immediately list it down to you so that it is easy for you to add <coughs> And this also works on your PowerShell window. So as you start typing, it does not show you the command that as it shows in this ID, but it will, you can hit a tab and it will let you auto complete a given command. So say for example, I want to run this command, get command. I can just start typing. If I hit tab, so it takes me to the first command that's there on the get. So I think the font would be too small. Let me just make it a bit bigger. Okay, so a bit bigger font, so more clearer to see. The command let that I'm running right now is get hyphen C. I'll just type the first two alphabets and hit the tab. You can see it automatically completes. Not only that, it also capitalized the first alphabet. So that is generally how the command let runs. It's not mandatory that you capitalize your command lets. So the commands are not case sensitive. However, just for the aesthetic purpose, it capitalizes it so it becomes more easy to read next i type hyphen i can again go tab it shows me all the variables that are available so it lets you auto complete as well not just for your command but also the parameters that i can supply to it Same thing, we will just check on the ID. So once again, I will type PowerShell. The next command, next option that I see down here is the PowerShell ISC. The same thing works here as well. Okay, so this gives me a more Better prompt. I can select from the drop down what command I want to select in. By typing, I can filter it more better. So now I can select it directly. Likewise, I can also use the scripting pane. I just type new and this opens my scripting pane. So the, whenever I'm doing a script, I can utilize this and it will execute the complete command as one. So 
execute, I can just press F5 or use the run script. So this will execute all the commandlets that are typed over here. So we we'll move ahead. So now we can see what type of variables, commands, and how we can pipe various commands. We can use comparison operators, the flow control and filtering of the results. Variables are defined in PowerShell with the dollar symbol. The variables are case insensitive and they are not a fixed type. You can cast them to any type on the fly. You don't need to define them before you use. You can just use your variable anywhere within your commandlet. Also, we have specific variables that are reserved. The dollar through, false, null, and profile. So they are reserved keywords. And we cannot use this. We cannot assign these to any values. They have default values already predefined. So to get started with variables, it's very straightforward. You can just take a variable and assign a value to it. Once again, we can run this. So I'm just using my PowerShell. I'm not using the ISC right now. Okay, so, so this is a string, so I'm using quotes, numbers, you do not need to use quotes. So the same thing as you use in your programming language applies here as well. Now this variable that I have created, its scope is present throughout this PowerShell window. If I try to access this variable from another PowerShell window, it will not recognize this variable. Its scope is not throughout the Windows operating system. It is limited to only this PowerShell window. As soon as I close the window, all the variables are destroyed and the memory would be released. So if I try now and go to my ISC, and if I try to, uh, first, sorry, I will run the command here itself to see the variable, to see the output of the variable. Again, to recall the value of the variable, you just specify the variable and you can see the value. You do not need to write an echo or any print statement to see the value. The variable can be addressed directly. Same thing now if I go and run it on my ISC window. Okay, so I put test variable. Okay, so it does not resolve to anything. It just executed it. So it's a blank value. So you do not see any output of that variable. Likewise, I can also assign the variable a value over here. And then I will make it display. So now you see this again gives me autocomplete. So this variable, as since I have defined it within this window, I can directly now in the ID itself as go to that variable that is a reference to that variable. Okay, so now when I execute, I can see that this gives me the output. If I delete this statement, and once again, if I execute, it still outputs. It still gives me the output. I can directly type as well over here in the console and have this executed. Okay, so this again lets me auto complete. It shows me that the variable does exist over here. Hit enter. So once again, I can see the value is present. Because I've not yet closed my window, 
the window is still active for the PowerShell. And hence, the variable is still active in this context. Now, you need to take care when you're running, running long scripts, especially which handles a lot of data, that you destroy the variables, you unassign the variables. Otherwise, it can consume a lot of memory on your system and make the console crash. So it is possible and does happen. So you do need to use the coding best practices to unassign your variables once you're done with them. So we'll also just check quickly the various other variables. So we have the static variables, that is the, sorry, the predefined reserved variables. Now, this example uses the mix case. So you see, though I've put the variable in mix case, it still identifies the variable. The same thing we can also try out with test. Okay, so the variable is once again still accessible. So I can still pull the value though I'm using a mixed case. We can again follow over here the best practices of coding where it's generally recommended to use camel case for your variables. So those all still apply over here. And PowerShell lets you use that. So it does not limit you from using any best practices that you're already aware of. You also have the exclamation mark that makes negates the value. You can assign the variables to each other. Yes, and definitely you do not have a space in your variable name, so that will make it a new symbol or literal so you have to be careful with that your variable name should be one word okay so tab autocomplete also works over here So I'm also able to tab autocomplete and also view the variable that I just assigned. So simple way to assign a variable. The same variable now I can also give it a new value. So now I'm giving it an integer value. Another thing that you can do in PowerShell, you can just use your cursor and go up to see the previous commands that you executed. So that is also supported. So in the previous line, I just reassigned my variable. So you can see the value has changed. My old variable still remains the same. I haven't touched that yet. You can also put outputs of various commands into your variable. So that also is supported. So you do not only need to put static text and literals. You can you can also assign objects to your variables. So like it's, it does support your complete OOPS framework. We'll see that a bit later. So the commands on PowerShell are called commandlets. Now, when you, I was executing the commands, so we just saw variable, but the first command that was get command, we noticed that it had a two word pair. The two word pair is basically your verb noun pair. Whenever you are running using PowerShell, every commandlet would be a verb noun pair. It is built in. And you can also extend it by coding yourself. So yes, that also is possible. 
you get already ready-made libraries that you can download and extend the current commandlets that are available. The most common commands that you would execute when you're learning PowerShell is the get help. This lists the entire command help, that is all the variables and how you can, sorry, all the parameters and how you can use that particular commandlet on the console get member there's another commandlet that lets you see the commands and then you have the get command that shows whether the particular command is available or not on your machine why i say available or not because powershell does have extensions so like we already discussed that we can download and extend your powershell it depends on your dotnet framework so your dotnet framework depending on the libraries that you have installed you can make use of them on your powershell commandlet as well and you can also download additional commandlets for various specific purposes for example if you want to manage your ms sql server on your machine using powershell you can have that module installed on your powershell that would generally get installed when you install your MS SQL Server. Likewise, for the different roles that are available on the machine, if you want to, say, manage your DHCP server, your DNS server, or you want to manage your Active Directory, these are some inbuilt roles on your Windows machine. By default, these commandlets are not available on your Windows Server machine. But when you add the role, so when we are seeing the session, when we add a particular role along with that, it also adds the management tools that are associated with it. Not only does it install the GUI based management tool, it also adds the PowerShell extensions that are required to manage those specific that to manage those specific roles or features from your PowerShell window. So these are some commands that can easily be run on any system. Again, these are not case sensitive. Autocomplete works here as well. So this gives you a brief of what is the commandlet used for. It's another thing you can see that it says get help cannot find the help file. So the help file also needs to be downloaded and configured onto the machine. So your power shell is a minimum shell that is shipped with the windows os in order that i have the entire help available i need to download and install the help files so i need to run update help in the previous versions of powershell the first time that you would run the commandlet the operating system that is your powershell would connect to the internet and download its respective help files so it will take a bit amount of time to set up. Now to optimize the operating system, the help files are left out and you can download it as required. Also, you can go online and check the help file. So Microsoft does provide you a rich repository of help files. If I do get hyphen help, this should get in the first link itself the microsoft help file yes and the same help is available there as well how you can use the command and the various commandlets also on the left hand side you can see the list of commandlets available another thing you will notice on top it says powershell 7.2 so your PowerShell commandlets would be restricted 
to the version that you are using. Depending upon the version that you're using, you may not have certain parameters. You may not have certain commandlets configured on your machine. And there's also dependencies for various commandlets on the PowerShell version that you have and other libraries that are required to run them. So yes, there's a full dependency tree on how you can use which libraries. So those are generally resolved when you install that particular commandlet. So PowerShell does do that for you internally. You can switch to an older version of PowerShell help file over here directly. Generally, PowerShell is backward compatible. So any PowerShell script that you have created previously should run without any modifications on the newer version of PowerShell. Also, you can see piping commands would have work. So if you have a very huge commandlet that you're running, you can definitely pipe it. Okay, see, so less is not there, so only more is there. What is piping? Piping is sending your output from a command to an as an input to another command so that is known as piping in the shell language the same help file that we've seen online So I can see what type of variable that I have when I use the commandlet that's get member. The type of the variable. So I've not yet closed my commandlet, so I should be able to access the variable. Sorry, it's test variable. Okay, so this is my variable. And since it's a method of string, it's a string variable. So all string operations that I can perform on it is shown to me over here. Likewise, if I check my other variable, So the other variable that I created was dollar. My new variable. Now, since this is a type integer, so I assigned it to an integer variable. So it shows that's a type of integer and the various methods that I can perform on it. So these are some troubleshooting steps that we can utilize. So the get command we already seen is to find the commandlets and get the details of them. So another thing that you must have noticed when I run the get command, it, so it's on my ISC window. So it showed me the version number of the commandlet. So like we discussed that the version number is important because that will show you, that will tell you what features are available with that commandlet. If you're looking for a special parameter or certain feature, then you would need to update your PowerShell to that particular version so that that commandlet is available for you to utilize.
this is just an comparison for the older people I mean for the older command that was available on the Windows platform so people are very used to using the command shell Microsoft does plan to depreciate the command shell but for backward compatibility purposes the command shell is still available there are no improvements there are no new commandlets that are available on it so microsoft only recommends that you move on to powershell there's no active development on the command the command as you know the cmd was first made and utilized in dos that was way many years back so along with the dos operating system that bill gates had launched so it was launched that commandlet was available at that time so after that there was a lot of improvements till 98 xp then when microsoft started making powershell entire development for that was stopped and microsoft recommends that you move on to powershell but the cmd commands the native commandlets are still being used not that it's completely depreciated they are still being used and still supported so many administrators do make use of batch commands so just a comparison of what new objects that you can make use of when you're using powershell so they are minimal changes that you need to do and yes your CMD was mainly a serial commandlet, that is, it would run line by line, whereas your PowerShell supports OOPs, so you can go back and forth within your script. You can make use of all the OOPs features. So next is the power of piping, where you can take the output of a commandlet and feed it as an input to another command when you're writing a huge script this is generally more beneficial where you do not want to store the output into a variable and then process it rather than that you'll take the output and directly feed it to your next commandlet and process the data a real time rather than having it saved onto your commandlet so this also increases the speed of execution so this is again applicable for longer running commands so there you would generally see a significant increase in speed small commandlets that generally complete quickly you may not see that much advantage but yes when you run longer commands that take process a lot of data, this general this gives you a good advantage in terms of speed. The simple way to pipe a command: you take a commandlet, use the pipe symbol, and then you specify what needs to be done next to it. The com the piping works same as it used to work in com in in the CMD commandlet. We can try this out also again quickly. Now, another thing you would have noticed is that I'm mostly running get commands. So get commands will not modify any files within your system. So this is a very safe command to generally use within our system. And especially when you're learning PowerShell, it's not going to modify any system file, not going to make any changes to your system. It's just going to read the configuration. Okay, this also supports your, this also supports piping. Now, what is this going to do is that I'm going to list all the items in my directory. That is the directory I'm currently in and only select the first 10. So you see now the advantage of having the verb hyphen noun syntax. So I can read it as it says. So 
I don't need to go and open the reference for the commandlet. It says get, that means going to read, child item. So what is the child item? That is I'm in this directory. So whatever is in this directory is going to list it. Next, I'm saying select the objects. So whatever is the output of this, and I'm saying first 10 objects to be displayed. I enter and it lists me the first 10 objects that it could find within my user directory. So you can specify more details. So there's further more that you can see in the example. Yes, another thing, the window is resizable. And you see also that I'm no longer using select object. I'm just using select. So queries like we use in SQL Server, very basic, is also supported over here. So this also works. I can also put a select star. That means it will list all of it. So that also works. If I omit this select hyphen first 10, so it will by default select all. But if I want to force it, I can also put a select star or I can put a certain parameter. I can put a where clause that will define what should be visible or what should be the output of the command left. We'll try that out as well. Okay, I left a space, so that's why the autocomplete was not working. Now, for the property, you'll see the autocomplete will not work. That is because the property is a variable. I mean, it's more to the context of the object. Autocomplete will only work for the parameters and not for the values of the parameter. Though they would be static, you would have to type them out. So now I have filtered the output with just the last access time and name. So further, I will filter out. I put a where clause. Let me see. Select does it give me a where? It doesn't give me an if. Okay, this does not give. Okay, it's not supported on this version. So I'm not having that option. Never mind. We're not the other ways to get it done. So you can further pipe it and select only the objects that you want. Okay, so we have also the option to sort. So we can also sort and do various operations like we do on a, you can say a SQL server or your Excel file. So all those properties are available here itself on your commandlet. You have operators. So you can make use of operators for comparison. Again, couple of examples. You can also make use of regex. So regular expressions are also supported on PowerShell. So it, it 
generally just supports your entire .NET suite. So .NET supports regular expressions. So, so that, that's your PowerShell. You just see a few comparison operators. Yes, when you type escape, it clears your commandlet. You can also type clear. That will clear your entire window. This should say false. I can also do the same thing on ISC. A simple comparison and I execute this. Okay, say that's false clearly. Yes, because it is different. If I assign them as same, then it says as true. The same thing, uh, so you can do it both on your ID that is on the PowerShell IC, or you can do it on the command channel as well. Then the question would come that why do we need the IC? So this is mainly for your script debugging. So when you're using your PowerShell window, you cannot view your entire script in one pane if you have multi-line scripts. So, so far we are just running one, one commandlet. Most probably whenever you use a script, you would have a quite a long script, multiple lines in them. So this is, makes it much easier to view as well as execute and troubleshoot the script. We also have various flow controls built into PowerShell. Yes, you can write if statements. You can write for statements for each loops and for and while loops. So all of them are supported. You can also use further the other comparison and flow control commands that are available or in .NET, so that is completely supported over here. Now, when you're writing your for flow control, so again, you can write it onto your commandlet or use the ID. Using the ID is more better. You can write it in a more better way. Now, this is showing various examples for writing the same script. The first one is writing the entire script onto one line that is for and it will print your hello world five times. The second one is using the pipe parameter. So using that and a variable that is a list of uh, sorry. And using a list to display the number of time that it writes. Then you have your conditional statement and at last your while loop. The same thing can be executed again in your command. I will use but uh, this time the ISC and I'll make the code a bit neat. I will not write it as it is given in the example.
So this is totally supported. You can make your code look a little clean. Finally, I'll close the bracket. Okay, now I need to go and execute this. You can see it works as good as it was in the single line it was. So you don't need to be making the code. Uh, you can use the best practices of coding, make the code look beautiful, and make use of the multi-line that we can configure that we can use in the ID. So this is the reason where you will make use of your ISC. You would make use of a PS1 file because you can encapsulate the entire command into a PowerShell file and execute them. Whereas if you're using just the console, you would have to have the um, entire command onto a single line and then execute that or paste your line one by one onto the command shell and execute another way is that you can also paste your entire command let the entire commands list of commands onto the powershell it will execute it one by one but in case there's an issue in the middle the remaining commands would continue to execute so you would generally not want that to happen that's why you would always make use of a powershell script and execute that also, you will get the output right in front of your screen. So you can make a decision in case there is any error right at that place. Yeah, hi, hi, Sandeep. Uh, Praveen, yeah, sorry to interrupt you. Yeah, Praveen. So, uh, like, uh, you know, can you go to the previous window where you have showed that if condition? Yeah. So over here, so uh, like you have written this, you know, on the first line with uh, dollar i equals to zero and dollar i minus uh, lt. So mm -hmm. what is that lt? I mean, that's the length. It's the value. So until it's below five. Okay. Until so, lesser than. It is lesser than. Okay. 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 So what so we? It is dollar okay. i lesser than five. So okay. till that time, it will keep on doing executing your for loop. Okay, so what if you know we want to uh, change that uh, variables to you know for greater than or uh, less than equals to? So uh, I mean, uh, are there any uh, help help query wherein you know we can get? Okay, this is the one. Yeah, yeah, you have the see. Now I've just put some operators over here. Okay. There are more operators, and especially if you learn .NET, there may be some more specific operators that you can make use of. So yes, you can make use of all of them. You can make use of complex commands or something that you have, what you call parameters. So all those you can make use of. The more commonly what you would use is a for each. So for I think so is not used on generally more nowadays in programming. We use for each and for every object that it finds, it does the processing. I think that is the more better practice that I've seen being used nowadays in programming. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that's awesome. yep. Welcome. Okay, likewise, we have the where command. So you can use where as well. So this will also the same thing where I was trying to use. Sorry, so you don't use a select for that. Uh, you use a where and you can do the filtering. We can go back to our PowerShell window where we were doing that command. Now, remember, I did not close the window so my commandlets are still available over here another feature of your powershell is that you can browse through the history even if i close it i think so it nowadays does support viewing your older commands that you have executed okay so where i need to say name okay Yes, so I need to put property. My property, okay, I have a name property. 
I'll say like because I know I have a document folder. Now I'm not explaining the various syntaxes like light, greater than, and all because those are general programming uh, things. So actually skipping them. But yeah, these are the parameters. You can just search online. There's a lot of help available for this. I'll show you how to search that as well. So generally, you will not even write the scripts by yourself. You would always make use of available scripts from the web. OK, I do not have anything like doc. So the D needs to be capital. Still nothing. Let's put a star, let it list everything first. Okay, I do have documents to type the whole thing. Okay, so I need to type actually the whole thing. So this matching, it's a complete match. Ideally, like is it will do a partial match. So it may be a bit different how it works on PowerShell. But yes, it works. So you can do a filtering directly in your PowerShell. You don't need to go to any other program to make do a filtering. So executing of scripts is again very straightforward. You just need to specify the file name and execute a PS1 script. Just note the syntax. So when we used to run in command shell, so those who are familiar with that, you always just specify the name of the file and it executes. Whereas when it comes to PowerShell, you need to specify a dot slash if the file is present in your current directory so that PowerShell can recognize the file that needs to be executed and then execute that file. Also, the second command that you see here, set execution policy unrestricted by default. PowerShell scripts are not allowed to execute on an operating system. So always remember that by default, they are not allowed. You need to first time run this command. So see the commandlet, it is set. It is not a get. So it will set the execution policy to unrestricted. That means it will allow running of any PS1 file on your system. So you should be very sure where you're running this command line, where you, wherever you run this command let, it will allow running of all PS1 files on your system. So be very careful about that part. So once again, it's easy to run a PowerShell file, just save it. So I'll just use the existing file that is there. Let me save that. My desktop trainings. Save. For loop. Okay, this will save it as a .ps1 file. Hope it does not add the extension. Okay, yep, it did not add the extension. So good. You can now execute this file. Now it's on my desktop, so I have to just go to that folder. Okay, so that's for loop PS1 and hit enter. You see, the first time it gives me an error because my execution policy is not set. So it will not allow me to run the PowerShell file. So I need to first of all set the exception. Set execution policy. Unrestricted. OK, so it tells me whether I want to change. It will ask me to confirm. I'll say yes for now. OK, so this requires elevated privileges. So because of that, it's not allowing me to. But I can also scope it to my current user so that I can execute these commands.
Okay, so this now the execution policy has been changed, and now I can execute the PowerShell script. So you know, though the script did not have any malicious content, I myself created. Still, it will not allow me to run that, just because of the reason that PowerShell scripts are not allowed to run on your system by default. Okay, so we are almost to the end. So we can also make use of functions. Just like in your any favorite programming, oops, programming language, you make use of functions. So again, this is more similar to .NET programming. So you can make use of functions, you can call functions, you can put code into your functions, you can pass parameters, you can specify a default value for your parameter. All those things you can do with the help of functions. Now, when you are using PowerShell you, and you do not have, say, an access to the internet, you want to know all the verbs that you want to make use of, PowerShell does come with inbuilt commands. One of the commands that we saw was get help. Likewise, you also have the commandlet get verb that lists all the verbs that are available. Get help also lets you see into specific commandlets and what all syntax it allows us to execute. Likewise, you can also see the online help. And other best practice that, that is recommended is to always use comments. You can use comments with the less than symbol, pound, and close it with the pound and greater than symbol. So every project has its own definition of how you should specify comments so it's up to you and the project how you want to comment so this is just giving you a guideline that this will be a good way to put comments at a given place okay just some examples and yes, so as your commandlets are scripts, so they are code that you're writing in PowerShell, you can save the commands into a repository. You can move it, push it to a Git repository or any sort of repository that you make use of. All repository supports uploading of PS1 scripts because the, by default, they are not binary. Hence, they do not pose any threat to a system until they are executed. So because of that, all source code systems support the PS1 scripts. Some more good ideas. So one of this we already discussed that we should read the script before we run them. So make whatever scripts that you run, make them safe. Ensure they are safe while running. Check for valid parameter values always verify the parameter values before execution you have the command get help that will help you see that file and yes we come to the end of the session so what is the benefits of powershell easy to get started the PowerShell syntax is very easy to learn and pick up, especially if you're from an OOPS background. It has integration with Office 365. It also has integration with Azure. So you're not limited to those. Uh, so you're not limited to just your operating system. You can utilize your PowerShell even for remote activities. So one of the things we did not discuss that PowerShell also allows you to manage Azure VMs, Azure manage, uh, sorry, to manage Azure resources. So that's known as DSC, that is desired state configuration, not just Azure resources, also resources within your infrastructure. If you need to maintain a server at a specific configuration, you can make use of PowerShell DSC that allows you such a configuration. Now, how do you get help? So you say you want to do a certain activity. GitHub is a very good source where people post a lot 
of PowerShell files. Any activity that you think of you want to do, it's most probably 99% of the time you will have a script already available. You would definitely need to tweak it a bit, but most of the scripts are built in and available on the uh, GitHub repository. So say that I want to do in PowerShell, say I want to install the role of Hyper-V. Uh, Sandeep? Yeah, I'm almost done. Just another two minutes. OK. Uh, yeah, I, actually, I was saying that I need to leave as I okay. have another call. So would we schedule the second session or? Uh, oh, no, we can drop it. Yeah, we are done. We can cancel that, right? Yes, yes, yes. OK, perfect. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Sandeep. Okay, so now installing a particular role. So you just search on it, search on the internet for that. You will get the entire commandlet using PowerShell. You don't need to go, you don't need to write the full thing by yourself. All the parameters, everything that you need, you will get it along with the help file as well. And what all things you need to customize. Now, this is just showing you the commandlet that you can use. You will also get the entire script from configuring your role to customizing it and further adding additional roles to it. So another note that you will see that I've opened over here is that when it installs the feature, it gives you an other switch that says include management tools. So on the command line, you need to specify that explicitly. On the GUI, by default, it adds it. But it gives you an option to uncheck the option for management tools. But on the commandlet, you have an option to manage it, to specify that particular commandlet. So likewise, PowerShell is again a very good topic. You have a lot of help available online. Please do check out. And you can definitely use your own machines to experiment with PowerShell. You don't require a different machine to work on. Most of the commandlets would work on your mach machine as well. The PowerShell version generally comes as soon as you launch your PowerShell. So you can verify the PowerShell version. OK, that's not show here. You can also do a get version. Okay, there's a specific script for that. Again, you can search on the internet. You get the specific script for getting the version of your PowerShell. So you know what version of PowerShell is running on your machine. So whichever side you go to, I think so it should just be a get command. Yes. So again, be careful what command you run. Ensure that you run get commands only. At least when you're starting to learn, then later on you can move on to the set commands and the other commandlets. Okay, so this is the command dollar ps version, not command actually available that stores the version number. So I'm having the version number 5.1, and you can see it's backward compatible to up to version one. So we already discussed that it is backward compatible. Latest version that we saw on the internet was seven. So most probably I would need to update the PowerShell version to use the latest commandlets. Okay, so this brings us to the end of the session. Or do you have any questions? Yeah, uh, something I have one minor question. Yes, sir. So uh, as you said, you know, uh, in this script, you know, we can uh, do whatever uh, scripting we want to. So can we uh, import multiple scripts in single script? Okay. Yes, you can do. PowerShell does support nesting. So okay. like you see, I did a dot slash command and I ran the script for the for loop. So that yeah. was the script. So likewise, within the script itself, I could call an other script. I could have a line that reads dot slash XYZ script dot PS1. So you can actually do that. 
you can pass variables to it you can have it configured you can run its activity then store it into another variable and that variable you can use in the main script so all those things you can do so it uh, completely supports oops so anything that you will import any additional scripts that you will add will definitely be available throughout your powershell session okay yeah. thanks welcome and yeah that's a good practice so that you can break your scripts into multiple files and it does make it more readable but yes but it will also make it a bit difficult to track so generally people do put all the scripts in one file so that's easy to share but yes you're not limited to that you can definitely break your functions you can break your scripts into multiple files you can create libraries etc out of the files and make use of them you can actually also create your own commandlets yes so you can create your own commandlets you're not stopped from doing that you can create your own commandlets for something that you repeatedly do create your own commandlet and make use of them rather than just creating a script especially if it's going to be used organizational wide uh, many people are going to use so it's more optimized to create your own commandlet than just creating a script and distributing it across so that's also another option so yes <laughs> powershell is very extensive and you have a lot of freedom to do what you want so the limit is only your imagination just like any programming language it does give you limitless opportunities of what you want to do okay any other question okay then we'll end the session thank you for being a good audience and all the best for your training thank you thank you thank you Thank you.